Hi YouTube, VidHead85 here. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Regnor study. Now if you haven't heard, heard about it, the Regnor study is like one of many other uh, anti-gay adoption studies that have um, a conclusion that for some reason, just because we're gay and lesbian, that our children live in poverty. And if anything, if I were to indulge that, I would say, it is not a poverty that is has anything to do with being gay, but then again, it kind of does because the law is written in such a way that it will disenfranchise the children of, of gay and lesbian couples. If I, I were to, to concede a point, that would be it. But then again, it is something of their own making. When, when they have legislators and they go ahead and say, well, we will stop any kind of relationship recognition and therefore put a tax penalty, a gay tax, on those who do not want to live the way that we believe they should, then that's basically what ends up happening is that inequity there that 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 um, that creates that very thing that you are only confirming with your study, which is what I say is the Republican solution. Find something broken, break it even more, and then complain when you've broken with when what you've broken is actually broken. Is that a surprise? So if there is any truth to that, that is it. Now some of us can't now Living in poverty is not saying that you can't balance a checkbook, which the fundies say that, you know, uh, which the, uh, many people are saying poor people are poor because they can't balance a checkbook, but obviously they're far overlooking the tax code or who, that, who that's there to, to represent and who that favors. But, um, you know, that's not saying that gay people can't balance a checkbook, which and, you know, we don't have abortion, so, you know, like some people say that, you know, we can't ask for gay rights when we're, quote, killing innocent babies, but then again, it's not us who are having the abortions and accidents, which, you know, hey, you know, go ahead, oh, you know, nine months later, boom, and then, oh, I can't take care of this baby, or I am I am a heterosexual parent who, you know, obviously had this baby, and now I can't take care of them, so I'm going to put them in the foster care system, and that's not my problem anymore. And then when gay people adopt their children, they're like, oh my Goodness, my children aren't gonna have a father and a mother but then again you know what children need more than a gender from their parents perhaps you know like maybe people should stop calling it gay parenting and just say hey it's a parent that happens to be gay and what difference is it to a child when they have a loving family that will nurture and sustain that that child now I want to talk a little bit about the Gill versus Florida case which overturned uh, the 1977 prohibition on on um, gay and lesbian parents adopting. The Gill case was uh, was brought in court, in a uh, state court, and there were two boys who they could not adopt, and they were, they were black boys. Now, most of the time, minority children languish in foster care after a certain age because they're considered what's called unadoptable, and then they age out of the system with hardly any skills, um, they hardly any any real plan for a future. We, we definitely need to reform that too. Now, Gil, Gil and their partner, as far as these kids were concerned, they were their parents. Now, some people may say, you know what, I look at that case and I agree that gay parents can be good parents, but yet they want to you know, uphold bans on parenting from, you know, for gay, gay and lesbian couples, even seeing that it's not about the sexuality of the parent, but it is about the fact that this child this child has now thrived in, a, in an, an environment that has been purposely crafted for them. Now, it's not, it's not sexual, it's only sexual, the sexual orientation of the parent and not something that should disqualify someone for being a parent. Now, let me talk about Don Stefano. She's a, she's an activist in Canada who had a terrible father who happened to be gay. And gay parents, again, like I said, they're simply parents who happen to be gay. She had a bad father and claimed that he was a bad father because he was gay. Yet when we point to the horrors of terrible straight parents, it is as if they tell us that even if in an abusive household, as long as they have a married mother and father, they're better off. And even Rick Santorum, a presidential candidate, by the way, told us that it would be better for a, them to have a father in jail than to have two mothers. Now, I find this inexcusable because that's not only a slur on those, on, you know, gay and lesbian parents, but the many single parents as well as adopted children. Now, I remember um, there was a 
a small little blurb on the internet and it was not about it was about gay parenting and whatever and it was supposedly from um, Judith Stacy and this bibliarts guy who Judith Stacy is pro um, LGBT adoption and yet they twisted it to say that they're gonna wonder about their father and the problem is no matter what an adopted child who normally same-sex parents usually adopt or gay, gay and lesbian parents usually adopt that they said well they wanted to know about their mother and father well it's because they know they're from a heterosexual union and they know that you know they have no confusion these are my parents but I wonder who my real parents were um, that's not not to, to say that they don't understand who their parents are as far as they're concerned but they wonder about them because it's natural to do so also they were saying that um, that they're more likely to experiment with same-sex relationships and a pastor's child is not and anybody who has who may think about it may not have that longing or may not have that curiosity everybody has a curiosity I was born under straight parents of course because I wouldn't be here and I know people who experimented and they were like well I'm not gay what about that old college I was drunk excuse too so obviously they don't they don't talk about that now back to the Regnera study it's simply that kind of study where they affirm something that's a stereotype yet the methodology is flawed everything just does not add up and of course it was directed by NAM and, and directed by all of these other groups that 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 have that, that have a vested interest in not seeing L LGBT individuals with their rights and also um, it had it wasn't peer-reviewed most studies are peer-reviewed and also with that I want to talk about Al Franken busting someone who um, who claimed who wrote a study and then he checked out the study that it was based on only to find out that they mis deliberately misrepresented research and Peter Spriggs of the family Re or American Family Association said they shouldn't have a right to tell me that I misused their research so I'm pretty sure if I if I misrepresented some of your research to support same-sex couples you would say the same thing and then I I could usually say your same line and then you would say no that's wrong I didn't say that so the right will continue to cling to these studies until we make it clear with each passing day and year that this is junk science and I wish that Congress would stop taking briefs from focus on the family traditional values coalition and all those other groups so that they will know that their bigotry is not happening has no place in that it has no place in the halls of government simply put the regular study is one in a long line of those of those kinds of studies and um, if you have not um, if you do not know what what this is just Regnerus R-E-G-N-E-R-U-S also look up Scott Rose um, Alvin McEwen also um, he may have written something about that too um, and Pam Spaulding um, more than, than likely if you don't find it in either four of those um, then they, they haven't posted on it which I find it very unlikely but check those out um, I'm making this video outside so it may, may be very loud but check those out um, and rate comment subscribe and check out the new civil rights program or new civil rights movement um, Pam's coffee blend and I believe it's holy monsters and headless bullies or headless bullies and holy monsters um, those are three great bloggers as well as uh, the, the the new civil rights program or new civil rights movement I believe Scott Rose and a host of other great LGBT writers um, and LGBT allied writers um, are in fact um, uh, they they write for that for that that newsletter so um, those are some, some great things that I get get a lot of information from that is very useful to me in making these these uh, videos so you have a great day um, and I'll talk to you later YouTube